Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I've been waiting to do this video for a couple of days. Um, a bunch of people sent me this as a, uh, uh, a heads up for a good idea for an, a video, and I'm finally getting smart and remembering to star things so I can come back later and find the links. Um, so this is Aubrey Sitterson. Aubrey Sitterson uh, started a G.I. Joe run about a year ago. Um, he's He was kind of you know, around the periphery of the uh, industry, and this was his first big assignment, and he decided to uh, make it full-blown SJW socialist propaganda. Uh, kind of a clutch move <laughs> if you're trying to get the sales of the book down to 4,500, which he was able to do by issue 9. So one of the things that I've talked about SJWs is uh, SJWs are effectively soldiers. They're soldiers for the far left um, uh, wing. And the deal about a soldier is you have to, you know, you have to prove your worth, you prove your bravery. You have to get shots off. That's why when Dan Slot does a two and a half hour live stream with Ethan, and for two hours it's just sweetness and light, it can't just end that way. He's got to, in the last couple of minutes, call 48,000 comics fans merely picks fools whose, uh, whose uh, opinions don't matter. Like, you're not allowed to get out there to get on the battlefield, to see the enemy, and not shoot at them. Um, so Aubrey Sitterson got G.I. Joe. He ran it into the ground. Um, uh, uh, the lowest selling G.I. Joe book possibly ever. I've never seen uh, even like other licenses that aren't that good, like uh, like the, some random Transformers book will still... 4500 is ridiculously low. And remember, when a company does a license, they have to cough up money to the person they bought the license from. So... IDW is probably losing money. Uh, ID, uh, Aubrey made a very controversial statement on September 11th of this year, saying basically, if you weren't in Lower Manhattan on the day of the attack, well, then you're just a poser. Bunch of people got upset. The G.I. Joe fan base is very, very patriotic. Um, and uh, so there was a call for him to get fired. I did like eight videos on it. And IDW just uh, punted it. At first, they gave a release that looked like they were going to treat it seriously. I talked to some insiders, and they said they're just hoping this falls down the memory hole. And uh, it didn't. <laughs> we all remembered. And uh, the, the sales from issue 7 to issue 9 were a 1,000 less. Now, he's rebooting with Scarlet Strike Force. Um, so that'll get the little bump of a number one. And, of course, uh, Female Lady will get it a whole bunch of attention from the comic press. But we all know who's writing it. <laughs> it's going to quickly... Uh, drop in sales. IDW has made has made a hard left turn, um, and and watched their uh, revenue decrease by ninety percent in a year. And uh, they're sticking to it. I have no idea what they're trying to do. So anyway, this whole thread is a fascinating peek into the SJW mind and how toxic and hateful and racist they are. Uh, so we'll just uh, oh and and we'll start off with uh, self congratulate. Aubrey Citizen says. My thread on lasers in G.I. Joe's Scarlet Strike Force was well received, so let's talk about something else that has upset a very vocal group of fans. The change from Salvo's original appearance to the current. Uh, okay, so it starts off not that bad. Um, uh, Self-congratulatory, but hey, let's talk about something. Um, so you see this. Um, this is kind of like in the later. G.I. Joe every year would come out with new Joes and then new costumes for older Joes. This is kind of like the, the end of the, the main run of them. Oh, let me click on these uh, pictures so you can see. It goes from being this like a uh, football player looking dude to an obese uh, trans woman, effectively. Uh, look at that. Look at that gut. Look at, look, look at that little barely there jawline. Okay, we get it. Hey, do you think she's interested in men? Hell no. <laughs> so, uh. I don't know why I laughed that hard. That joke wasn't that funny. Anyway, so let me scroll down. Uh, so then he goes, uh, For the uninitiated, Salvo first showed up as an action figure in 1990, quite some time ago, years past the property's peak era. Eh, eh about two years. Um, since then, while never one of the most popular Joes, he's become a cult favorite because look at him. He's rad in all the best early 1990s way. He just has a helmet and he has a t-shirt that says the right of might. It's a really lazy design. Um, importantly, however, Salvo had not shown up in IDW's continuity. I know it doesn't matter to some folks, but it was important to me that we honor what came before by not recounting characters and stories. This is, um, 
uh, a lie. <laughs> He's retconned almost everything. He turns uh, rock and roll. Everyone knows him as a freaking machine gunner. He's a shotgun specialist, something that does not exist in the military. He turned a quick kick from a fun-loving guy to uh, inhumanly cruel and egotistical. There was an issue where I'm not going, not kidding. Uh, rock and roll was sacrificing his life to accomplish a mission. And uh, Quick Hick decided that uh, his best use of time at the exact same time was to get in a grudge match and beat uh, Snake Eyes almost to death while ritually humiliating him in front of others. Um, I wanted to use Salvo because, again, look at him. But at the same time, the Joes, which had changed to an international team. Yeah, that was really successful. We're in desperate need of some non-American characters. Yeah, why would G.I. Joe, a real American hero, definitely needs not real Americans. Uh, by the way, they've done this thing for political correctness to make an international team a couple times. Massive failure. Every time it does it. Yeah. We don't want some guy from India playing Captain America. There are things that are uh, American, patriotic, and it should be uh, an American person playing them. Uh, G the G.I. Joe first movie sucks. I mean, the live action ones. They made an international team. It was trash. And then they made an American team in the second one, and that one did a lot better. Uh, so, uh, also, being entirely honest, as great as the design is, in 2017, a big, heavily muscled white guy with a shaved head massive guns, and a t-shirt that reads The Right of Might gives off a vibe that reads way too alt-right for me. Okay, I'm... I've seen pictures of the clan, and Aubrey Citizen, you look like three-quarters of the people <laughs> that are, like, in the clan in the deep stick. So don't start with this visual profiling. Also, a heavily muscled white guy with a shaved head uh, that describes, I don't know, like, a third of every infantry platoon, platoon I've ever been in. So this is where he starts lying. So I decided to change Salvo's gender and race, recontextualizing something that could have been read as problematic, instead into something in power. Oh my god, look at all these buzzwords. R gender, race, recontextualizing, problematic, and empowering. Oh my gosh. And what's more powerful than badass female wrestlers? Ooh, I have an answer for that. Uh, Male wrestlers. <laughs> That's a, that was the easy one to ask. Uh, what is a, a more what is stronger than a female wrestler? A male wrestler. That's why I sent Giannis Nia Jax images for uh, reference. So I, sh I, you guys, you know, you guys got short term memories. You remember what I showed you with that picture of that um, obese man woman with a gunt. Uh, this is uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. Hoof da. That is. Uh, Okay, so now we know Aubrey's fetishes. That's gross. Um, so anyway, going back to the little... It's a little tricky how, how to do this one. So, every time the Olympics rolls around, images like these get shared widely. The point of them is that athletes come in all shapes and sizes. The commonly held idea that you have to look like a fitness model to be an incredible athlete is bunk. Uh, this is not... Uh, <laughs> It's not called Incredible Athletes, it's about soldiers. And yes, most soldiers tend to look like not that obese woman. And Salvo wasn't the only character that got this treatment. Ship, shipwreck also grew thicker. Um, uh, yeah. Um, well, the deal about that is that uh, he's uh, wearing a big thick sweater and that could just be the sweater bowing out. Also... I'm sure I can find a million uh, panels where he doesn't look like that. But while some folks noted that Shipwreck had put on some pounds, his appearance did inspire the outrage and, frankly, vile, hateful comments that Salvo's had. Vile, hateful comment. Would that be like saying that only people in Lower Manhattan can mourn 9-11? Would that qualify vile, hateful? Yeah, okay. Uh, but, uh, by the way, uh, Aubrey, you're <laughs> not... The type of person who should be uh, any kind of uh, moral authority for anyone. When people were calling for my head a couple months ago, one of their biggest complaints was our new Salvo. And while it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, Shipwreck is still a Hispanic man, whereas Salvo has changed to a Samoan woman, I think the overwhelming difference in response are telling. Oh, let me guess. We're all racist and sexist. Okay. Certain people don't want to see women of color, especially larger women of color, in their comics. 
And because the mere existence and depiction of larger women of color is so unacceptable to those people, that makes the representation of larger women of color all that much more important. G.I. Joe, as a concept, has always been about inclusion, and inclusion means everyone. Oh my god. So one of the things is I try to overthink this stuff, and I think, why do SJWs do this, and why do SJWs do this? And then part of it can just be that they're just not very smart. G.I. Joe has been diverse, not inclusive. Uh, the whole point of the military, the whole point of special forces, the whole point of all of the, you know, indocs and the, the very vicious training is to weed people out, to not be inclusive, to actually exclude people, because you want the best of the best at a very certain thing. An obese uh, man-woman uh, would not get into G.I. Joe. Now, here's the deal. There was this character called Quinn the Eskimo. He was a pretty stocky guy, pretty tall. He was in the Larry Hama, teardrop down my right cheek, uh, a run. He wasn't a member of the G.I. Joe team. All you had to do to make this woman accepted as a character is have her be some kind of mercenary. Have her be someone fighting to defend a village. And then she kind of ends up um, just uh, meeting them on different adventures. Look at Scarlet. We accept Scarlet as a soldier. We do not accept this gene spliced whatever it is. Um, so look at it. Accepted. If you can see my cursor. Not accepted. Sh shaboom kablamo. Let's explain that one awesomely. So scrolling back down to where I was. Um, well, it's my place. I'm proud of the work we've all done on G.I. Joe and are currently doing on Scarlet Strike Force. And while I wish everyone loved and adored it, there's something to be said for ticking off the right people, which we clearly have. Seriously, IDW, get your shit together. This is appalling. You guys have no control over your employees, your licenses, and this is not going to be, this is going to be remembered for years and years by the comic fan. You've, you've put a pall on your G.I. Joe sales for years. Um, G.I. Joe and the new Scarlet Strike Force have been designed from the ground up to be inclusive and aspirational. While I'm not perfect on this stuff, Margaret Scott checked me on a thing early on. Many thanks for that. It is something I strive for. I keep calling G.I. Joe the crown jewel of the Hasbro universe, and Scarlet Strike Force the best action comic ever. And inclusivity is a huge part of that. If the books weren't inclusive, neither of those claims would hold any water. Uh, okay, so then he just plugs his book, um, which is not going to sell well. By the way, is that... If you can see my cursor, is that the woman? God, they are purposefully making her just as awful looking. And then look at, like, the one comment he gets on the whole thread. <laughs> because, like I said, all the G.I. Joes, which is a very loyal fan base... Um, not huge, at least not in the comic book, uh, but you can consistently get, you know, uh, he's actually eroded. Oh, look, however, Commander's a woman, didn't see that one coming. So then at the, uh, at the beginning, uh, oh my gosh, the guy says, spoiler alert, the effing shitheads you're pandering to don't buy comic. Oh wait, I did the sarcastic voice and this guy's actually just said the right thing. <laughs> I thought he was talking about us. He was actually talking about SJWs. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So you pander to the people who don't buy comics. That's why your sales are now 4,500 on your ninth issue. You need to take that smug smirk off your face. By the way, that hairline is fake news. I've seen other pictures of you. You're doing worse than I am, bro. And I'm older than you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> look at this team, Scarlet Strike Force. It's like, Three women, one of which apparently has a receding hairline, a uh, uh, token minority, and I'm... Sh can we guess this guy's probably gay? Can we guess that? Oh, and co female Cobra Commander. Oh my gosh, that... My phone's not good at... That's when I put it to the side. Do you see this monstrosity? Huh? That's disgusting. So let's see the other ones. Oh, look. 
Oh, and Cobra Commander's a girl. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so yeah, so IDW has, is, they've slit their own wrists. Um, there's no coming back for this, at least in their handling of the, of the G.I. Joe uh, franchise. You've, you've put someone who is the opposite of 95% of the Joe fans. While turning out inferior product, he's continually uh, insulted, harassed, condescended to for months. And you've given him another number one. You were going to be rewarded with the same bad sales you got from the last one. Um, get your shit together, IDW. Marvel's done it. I know you did that cuck turn because you were trying to copy them, and then you copied their failure and almost destroyed yourself. Well, copy their thing with C.B. Sobolski. Get yourself some skinnier fat, actual comic eats who are normal people, don't talk about politics all the time, and get these freaking clowns out of there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Patreon and the Super Chat. You're funding original content, and I'll have more videos up later tonight.